none of what we have read so far even signifies having a luxurious lifestyle. So I wanted to address something that I'm noticing across people even that I look up to and you know the people that I look up to didn't preach a prosperity gospel but now for some reason they're leaning more towards that now and they say they're not but they are they're touching it they're going near it they're going very close to the prosperity gospel and the reality of the christian walk is that it's going to be hard and it's going to be difficult and it's not going to be easy at all jesus never said it would be easy he said give me your yoke and take my burden from my burden is light he said about religious practices as an old covenant it was heavy because it had to work to be right with god you had to offer your own sacrifices in the new covenant he's saying you who are weary come to me and i will give you rest as in the sacrifice of christ was enough to atone for your sin you know you're not saved by works anymore in the new covenant you're not saved by works you're saved by putting your faith in christ and by believing that he paid for your sins when you sincerely believe works are going to flow out from your salvation you don't work to be saved you work because you are saved but i'm not here to talk about i'm, I'm here to talk about why god allows hard times in a believer's life and that's the reality of walking the christian walk walking the christian walk is not prosperity it's not live your best life now although your best life is in christ there's some truth to that your best life is in christ amen i agree when you decide to follow Christ, your best life begins as in you begin to know God on a deeper level, on a personal level, to where you acknowledge and you begin to realize this is real. The reality of a relationship with God is a real thing. It's not just a thing to where you're you're you are you're enlightened in a way because the light lives in you now so because the light lives in you therefore enlightened in that way shape or form i don't mean enlightenment as in like in a buddhism way i don't mean it in a new age way i mean it in a way that the holy spirit god jesus christ who is the light of the world lives in you and now you have the light that comes out of you right the light that shines out of you you become a light you become a luminary because a body of light because jesus christ who is the light of the world now lives in you right that is the wonderful thing about it in a spiritual you talk about you look at it from a spiritual perspective that is wonderful that is amazing that is the best thing that can happen to you because you're not in darkness anymore when you come to christ you repent of your sins you turn to jesus now you're a new creation that is the wonderful side of it now let's talk about the reality on the earth the reality on the earth is going to be tough it's not going to be easy sometimes when you follow christ there comes a lot of sacrifice right you are a living sacrifice that's what it says in, in the word of God. You you no longer live for yourself. Jesus said, if any man decides to come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. When you pick up your cross, it doesn't say you have to make yourself suffer to follow me. But suffering is what will happen when you follow me. Right? Suffering can mean times of tribulation, times of trials. You know, God will test your faith. God does not tempt you. But God will put you through fire to refine you. The refining fire, like it says in the in the word of God, it is so that you can be sharper in a way. It's like if God sharpens his sword and God prunes you. God will put you through fire to refine you. God will put you. God is a potter and you are the clay. When God molds, when the potter is molding clay, I'm pretty sure it's very uncomfortable. In the same way, it will be with us. Sometimes you will lose relationships. You will lose friendships. You will lose connections. Some bridges will be burned. All that is for the good. Remember, God does everything for the good of those that love him. And that's what's called the pruning. God, Jesus spoke about pruning in the book of John also, in the gospel of John. Pruning so that you can produce more fruit. Let me go ahead and show you. Pruning. So this, is, this might be painful. But pruning is a necessary process. That way you can produce more fruit. And Jesus looks at you and says... You're not producing as much fruit as you're supposed to. Why? Because there's things that are holding you back. Relationships, friendships, job positions, uh, your career, anything, etc. Possessions. So it says here, John 15. I am the true grapevine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. 
For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branch. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So what it's talking about here is that the things that, that don't produce much fruit are pruned so they can produce much more. What does it mean? So if there's figs, God will cut out those figs. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. So he prunes the branches, which is us, that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. So so when he prunes the branches, when he prunes us, like I said, he will prune things from you that don't produce fruit. If there are, if there are certain friendships, if there are certain relationships, if there are certain possessions that have you working, right? Because a lot of, a lot of people are slaves to materialism, meaning people only live to pay off certain things. Right, if people are in debt to a house, people aren't going to work because they got to pay off the house. If people have a certain car that costs a lot of money, people are working to pay off the car. In other words, the materialism is getting in the way if the person wants to serve Jesus. If Jesus calls that person, but that person says, Man, I would love to follow the Lord Jesus, I would love to give up everything for the Lord. But then Jesus is like, well, you owe the car. What's it going to be? Are you? Do you prefer working so you can pay off your car? Do you prefer working so you can pay off your house? Do you prefer working so you can pay this off? Or are you willing to sell it, drop it, and follow me? Right? Doesn't mean that Jesus might leave you with nothing. You know, Jesus will provide. He'll send something else your way. Might not be as luxurious. Might not be as as the things that you wanted right the luxury that you wanted but jesus is your provider jehovah jireh so are you willing to give up luxury for him are you willing to let yourself allow yourself to be pruned from fruitless relationships with people there are some people that you might say well i can probably win them for the lord but jesus is like there's a reason why i spoke about and i emphasize the unequal yoke the unequal yoke is emphasized in Corinthians. Corinthians says, What fellowship does light have with darkness? There's a reason why the Holy Spirit prompted Paul to put in the scriptures in the first place. Because he knew the human condition. And he knows that the unequal yoke is not fruitful. The unequal yoke will pull you either to one way or the other. It will not be equally yoked. There will be tension. So let God prune your life. Let's say, like, tell God, prune my life, Father, so that you don't throw me away. Because you're gonna follow, you're not, you're gonna either follow the other person's influence that is leading you away from Christ, or or that person's gonna follow you. It's not gonna, there's not gonna be, it's, there's not gonna be compromise to where it's peaceful, right? Either if you're in a relationship with somebody that's not a believer, that's dangerous because that person's either gonna pull you or you're gonna pull them, right? As soon as they start pulling you to the other side, that's a sign that you gotta drop it. You gotta drop it. Pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to to help you drop it. The unequal yoke it will never work. It is not gonna work. And one of the worst things you can do is make a covenant, is build a relationship with a friend or with a spouse that is unequally yoked because that spouse will either pull you to their side or you'll pull to their side. And it's not always guaranteed to work to where they're gonna have a genuine encounter with Christ and come to Jesus. Although it can work, it can happen potentially, but it's not a guaranteed formula. It's not always going to work because that person has to have a genuine encounter with the Lord. If they don't have a genuine encounter with the Lord and they just go to church to follow you, it doesn't mean they're saved. The Word of God says, you know, remain there so that they can be holy, but it doesn't mean that they're saved, right? It just means that there's still favor in your life because you who are a child of God are still in Christ, right? So because you and that person are one flesh, then the favor of God is still in your life because of you. Doesn't mean they're saved at all though. But if God says your entire house will be saved, right? Then let God be true and every man a liar, right? Just keep praying for that person. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 is addressing the fact that just because we're in Christ doesn't mean that destitution or danger or threatened with death, calamity or trouble we're not exempt. We're not omitted from this. In fact, Romans chapter 8 verse 35 says, Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? 
doesn't mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears today for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above nor in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, verse 35, I want to go ahead and emphasize that. Nothing can ever separate us. So that there is a guarantee that things will sometimes get hard. But it doesn't mean that God has left you or that God doesn't love you. In fact, sometimes because we love God so much, we are going to be put through these things. And sometimes these things are meant to refine us. That way, it's God refining the believer. It's God sharpening the believer. So in turn, they can also build up other believers. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Also this, so why does God allow us to go through tough times? Also this, all praise to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. So there is a reason to our suffering at times. When we are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even though we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves were comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. So now that we've read so far, there hasn't been one thing that says that if you follow Jesus, you'll be a millionaire. None of what we have read so far even signifies having a luxurious lifestyle, being comfortable at all. In fact, all this signifies a discomfort. That's what it means to pick up your cross and follow him because a fruit of following him, life will not always go well as in like the luxuries. There is divine protection. There is supernatural provision that comes from God, but it's not guaranteed in a way that we think will be 100% supernaturally provided for. Now there's faith. If you have faith that moves the mountains and if you ask the Lord, you know, if it's according to God's will, amen. The word of God says the sun shines on the believers and on the unbelievers alike. So even if things go well with us, doesn't mean that, that we're right with God at all. So this is a reality of being a believer. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you are yourself lost or destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. I tell you the truth, some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you are yourself lost or destroyed? That is the reality of following Christ in its full capacity. Take up your cross daily. You must give up your own way. You must take up your cross daily and follow me. Meaning your flesh will suffer. You will suffer in the flesh. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. Not only that, guys. Not only are you facing, you know, troubles in the, in this in this physical dimension. Not only um, are you going to lose friendships that you hold probably dearly, but hold you back from Jesus. Not only are you going to probably lose relationships, you're not probably going to introduce friendships relationships you might even lose a chunk of your bank account because you might leave your career for jesus and hats off to you if you do that takes guts and that takes faith if the lord calls you to do it sincerely if you know it's the lord calling you to do it then do it take a step of faith and do it but from experience i will tell you this you will not be a millionaire <laughs> you won't sometimes even have to stay at home and eat your sandwiches and eat what it, what yep 
PB and J, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> it is not gonna always gonna be a luxurious lifestyle, and it will not be a luxurious lifestyle by any means. But here's worth it. What does the word say in Matthew? Also, the kingdom of God is like a hidden treasure for whom one sells all his possessions. So once you see the kingdom of God, and once you're perceptive of, of the heart of God, and once you're perceptive of, of the spiritual things of God, everything else of this world becomes of no value. And to the flesh, it's going to sting, and might sting. And your ego will most likely get bruised. But that's part of the crucifixion. Remember, we're supposed to die with Christ. We're supposed to crucify and nail our passions with Christ. None of us is supposed to live as in our worldly personalities or characters. And the world will put pressure on you saying, What are you doing? You really want to give up your luxurious lifestyle for what? To follow Jesus? And that's the world and that's the devil trying to whisper into your ear. Do not fall for it. That's the world and that's the devil trying to hold you back. The devil will make you feel guilty about giving up your comfortable lifestyle to follow Jesus. However, there is a heavenly reward if you decide to pick up your cross and follow him. Deny yourself picking up your cross and follow him. Jesus spoke a lot about heavenly rewards. So to conclude... None of it is going to be easy. In fact, it will be very hard, very difficult. But do not worry. Jesus said, take heart, for I have overcome the world. And not only that, we now, in the new covenant, have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the helper. He helps us with everything. And Jesus said, take my burden, take my yoke, for my burden is light. So I want to close with this. So, in finality... 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 but you Timothy are a man of God so run from all these evil things pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith love perseverance and gentleness fight the good fight for the true faith hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you which you have which you have declared so well before many witnesses. And I charge you before God who gives life to all, and before Christ Jesus who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate, that you obey this command without wavering, that you obey this command without wavering, that no one can find fault with you from now on until the Lord, until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Along with that, one of the things that, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of long suffering long suffering means lord i love you so much even if i'm going through this i will stick by you i will follow you no matter how much my flesh bleeds no matter how much my ego bleeds no matter no matter how much of my ego is bruised i will follow you that is long suffering and that is impossible by fleshly and carnal standards in nature it's worth it to follow christ remember we are not of this world we don't belong here. We're just passing by this world. So why are you living for this world? Don't live for this world. We're only here for a few years. We're only here for about 80, 70 years or even 100 years if the Lord permits. But our the Bible says that our life is like a vapor. Meaning to God, that's it. That's what that's that's what our 80 years are to our eternity to God. That's That's it. <laughs> that's it. You know, so live a life that's worth it. Live, and the way to live that worth, and the way to live that life that is worth it is to live for Jesus, live for the eternal, live for what's eternal, live for what is what is unseen, because the Bible also talks about how the unseen things are the actually the eternal things. The things that we see will eventually pass away. They're eventually going to corrode. This microphone that you see right here, eventually it's going to corrode. Eventually it's going to turn to rust and wither out. The things that are unseen, that's eternal. That doesn't wither. That doesn't fade out. That doesn't fade away. So live for the unseen. Live for the kingdom of God. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. It is the true way and it is the only way to Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. John 14, 6. It's not going to be easy, guys. Sometimes our flesh and our ego will, will bleed. Use wisdom, however. Walk in the spirit always, guys. Alright guys, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you receive a notification every time we upload a video or go live. If you want to go in and sew, I'm going to link the Cash App and the Zelle in the comments. 
if you want to sow a dollar or whatever you, the Lord leads you to sow. If you even want to sow, you don't have to. All this is free. But if the Lord leads you to do it, you know, it'd be greatly appreciated to support the ministry. And I really appreciate it myself. All right, guys. God bless you guys.